wish that our life just keeps getting better. <laughs> I don't even know what to say right now. Everything sounds stupid. We're back at the hospital. The baby had another incident today. The worst that it's ever been. Whatever happened before, this was that was like a tenth of what happened today. I was out to eat with my friends. He started having a blue spell. We had to do CPR for three minutes. The ambulance got there, took us to the hospital, and they just transferred us down to primaries. And he's, we decided that surgery that we were on the fence on, we are not on the fence about that anymore. We're getting it in the morning. And there's a lot more to this, but I don't even know if I have the words right now. He's okay. We're here together. Derek was in California. He flew home. Everything couldn't have gone better in all of that sense. There was someone at Chick-fil-A that did, that was, there was an OR nurse at Chick-fil-A. So she was able to administer the CPR to him and really saved his life. So we're here now, settling in for the night, prepping for tomorrow. Hey guys, how are we doing? I'm good, thanks. Um, I'm back at the hospital. I don't really know what to say right now because situations like this, you're just kind of at a loss for words. First of all, Jensen's okay. I was at Vid Summit and I was sitting there talking to some friends at lunch in between sessions. And uh, I got a phone call from one of our friends. I thought that was a little strange. I almost didn't answer it, but I thought, wait, why is she calling me? And so I, I almost put the phone in my pocket because I'm in the middle of a conversation with other people, but I thought, no, I need something. She wouldn't be calling me if something wasn't wrong. So I answered, and sure enough, she's just crying on the other end, trying to tell me what happened. And I'll get to that later because I can't start crying again right now. I've basically been crying for... <laughs> I immediately ran to my room, grabbed my bags, Jace Bennett, TJ Davis, you know, a few, a few friends, a few friends called and scheduled a flight for me to come home. I wasn't supposed to come home until tomorrow. Uh, they got me on a plane. I literally ran to the hotel, grabbed my bags, got to the airport. Like the shuttle was already outside waiting for me. And then right as I checked in, they were loading the plane. So I got it just in time. It's looking like he's gonna have his surgery tomorrow. It's kind of a risky surgery. I mean, anytime you're dealing with the aorta, there are some inherent risks. That poor little guy. I, I still don't even know exactly what happened. I am so thankful for the people that were I don't know who it was, but somebody saved my child today. He wouldn't be here if it wasn't for them. Hi, Cosette. Are you being a good girl? Yeah. I miss you. Can you tell mom that you ate all your dinner? I ate all of my dinner. Are you serious? Yeah. Mac and cheese. <laughs> you ate mac and cheese? Well done. Do your hair? Timing the kids. Okay. Mm. Jensen wants to see you. Do you want to see baby J? Baby J! Hey, open up! Oh, yeah, I said that's okay. That's okay. That's okay. Can you say hi, Jensen? Say hi. 
<laughs> he loves you too, buddy. The baby has something called RSV, which is a really, it's just a, it's a really bad sickness for babies. So when I, when we come home, we have to be even better about washing our hands because he got sick from somebody probably in our family. It'll be okay. But he's going to be just fine. I'm just telling us that our, everyone, when we come home, we're going to all be on our best hand washing, right? Uh-huh. All right. Love you, Cosette. Love you, Brielle. Love you guys. Bye. Love you. Well, here we are. Once again, at the hospital. This time, unscheduled. I don't even have a lot of words. He's pretty active, so that's good. Yeah, he's definitely acting he's like acting himself. Normal. Which is a good sign, a really good sign, considering he didn't have oxygen for three minutes. So between four and six minutes is when they can start to have brain damage. So we were starting to toe that line. I guess like fast version of what happened, I don't know, is that I had, got, I did, I had to run some errands today, so I got a babysitter for the little girls. And... I took the baby with me because, you know, he's my little sidekick and he goes everywhere with me. I went to an appointment and then after my appointment I was driving to um, to the mall to do some exchanges and my friends texted me and just said, hey, we're at lunch for Chick-fil-A if you want to come and I was just driving past Chick-fil-A so I was like, yeah, sure, I'll go. We ate, we're just chatting and ironically we we're actually talking about the surgery and I was just saying, you know, I've been feeling really overwhelmed we don't know what to do you know talking about all these things and he kind of woke up and got fussy and he was in this car seat so I pulled him out and started feeding him and I was nursing him for a little bit and then he started crying some more so I pulled him up and I started burping him and then I could tell he was like getting really upset so I kind of stepped away into this little nook area like where the you go into the bathroom so I kind of stepped over into that spot and I could tell he's, he was starting to have a blue spell. So I did my best to calm down, calm him down, and then I saw he wasn't calming down, so I started breathing. Sometimes if when he's doing it, if we just startle him, so we like breathe in his face like, like this, it kind of like startles him out of it. So I blew in his face a couple times, he didn't respond, and then by this time, one of my friends who we were eating with, she was like looking at me, and I was just like, this isn't good. So she came over. I tried to breathe in, give him a rescue breath, and she tried to give him one. And I by, knew. By rescue breath, she means forcing start, air down yeah. his trachea yeah. after it collapses. Okay, we're switched. Yes, we got him all situated and happy. Fed. Yes, and now I don't remember where we left off. <laughs> I tried to deliver a rescue breath. My friend tried to deliver a rescue breath. We realized it was a lot more serious than the last time he had this happen. So we went out into the area, yelled for help, yelled for someone to do CPR, and then that's when, you know, it all was kind of a blur for me because I, again, started losing my mind. And I know, like, it's hard because I would have hoped that I would have responded differently this time. But honestly, it was not the same thing that happened. It was what we saw last time was just a glimpse of what happened today. So a lady took me back, a stranger, and she just wrapped her arms around me and held me while I you know, I was screaming and crying. And then another stranger came over and started doing CPR on the baby. And my friends that I was at lunch with kind of were going between her and me. One of my friends was calling 911. One of them was kind of keeping me updated. I tried to look at the baby a few times, but he looked so bad that I couldn't even look at him. I mean, I thought he was gone. It wasn't like I thought 
like last time, I thought that we were losing him. You know, this time, like, I thought, this is it. Like, my baby's going to die here in Chick-fil-A. And I know it sounds like I don't want to be dramatic or something, but that's literally what I was thinking in my head. They called 911. They got there within four minutes of the call. Luckily, the baby had just started breathing right before they got there. And then, you know, they, the, the EMT workers, the paramedics, got me out to the ambulance and, you know, got him hooked up to everything. He was responding great to all of his vitals looked great, which was good because we were starting to get nervous about, you know, any issues with his brain. But he was crying. He was responsive. So all really positive things to see. As much as I didn't want this to happen, we were in the, it was another situation where it was like the right place. We, there were people there to help us. We were driving here in the ambulance and the paramedic was like, oh, he has RSV. And I'm like, wait, what? I guess they swabbed him and then his test came back positive for RSV, which is probably why his collapse was more serious because his, his trachea was probably more irritated, his airway was probably more irritated, which made it, him more susceptible. So, I don't know, it's just crazy. I was talking with the paramedic on the way down and he told me that when calls come in, you know, he's on call, I guess paramedics are on call for 48 hours at a time and he was on call and watching the screen, watching the 911 calls come in and he said that they go in order, like A is like a small thing that someone calls and like, and E is like the most um, serious and our, and he said that he saw someone was receiving CPR at Chick-fil-A and that it was a three month old baby. And he said his heart just broke. As much as I hate that today happened, I am just so grateful that he's okay and that we're gonna move forward and hopefully prevent this from happening again because I literally cannot handle it again. I think my mind I will snap. Like I can't do it again. Tonight after we got to the hospital, he started crying again and you can sorry. The nurses came in and had to talk to us about tomorrow. And it's late, so we just need to go to bed. Um, these are our beds. We need to be quiet so he can sleep. It's after midnight, and he's got a big day ahead of him tomorrow. So we'll fill you guys in on the rest tomorrow. I love our baby. Love our kids. We love you guys. Thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.